Say yeah. Say bye, Darren. I was gonna. I was waiting for you to finish. Okay, I finished. Say bye. Bye. All right, what you doing? Shooting 100, 200, 300 with the Leap 10 Primary Arms PLXC with the Griffin reticle. And uh, they're all subs. Going about 1,070 feet per second, they're reloads of ours just so that we can get the full 1,050, 70 out of the six inch barrel. This is a uh, little gunpowder. And uh, yep, Sierra Match King projectiles. Specifically, the factory second ones from Midway USA. So, very shitty support, so bear with me. I'm gonna go. You wanna aim it? You, can, you might have to zoom in. Yeah, that's where I'm going. You can, you can probably see 100, 200, and 300 with the same position. One, two, way back there. There's three. And then that three is a little tucked away. All right, yeah. starting at 100. That was me. All right. 300. Like that. Do it backwards. Let's see. 200. 100. That's how simple it is, folks. Welcome to E-Trees Enhancements, and today we're going to do our, I guess you could say, not quite final, but final review of the six inch Baxson 300 blackout barrel. Basically what this video is about is going over our overall 3000 plus round review on the Faxon six inch barrel. Now, this is not 3000 rounds overall on like one particular barrel, but actually on over about three separate barrels mm. that we own, but We've also uh, helped a lot of people out, you know, online, Reddit, people that have their own packs and six inches, and we've been able to support them getting their platforms up and running. So we have a lot of time behind the barrel, even if physically we only have about 3,000 ourselves um, over the course of three separate samples. So without counting all the barrels that we've actually sold. So, you know, we'll gloss over that, but. First things first, uh, the, the guy with us right now is called Derek. Called Derek. Derek. <laughs> Derek. We'll go with Dirk. Uh, so, Derek, um, how long have you had this six-inch barrel? Uh, yeah, I'd say probably about two years now. Okay. Got and about... Then, I lost why, track after a thousand. Up, why did you end up with that barrel? May I ask? Um, well, I started with your ballistic advantage six inch and then we wanted faster twist rate so and something a little bit nicer than a ballistic advantage so i went but, with your recommendation but would you say it's my fault mm, yeah i would say it's your fault so I, I i took you through the uh the unfortunate and fortunate path of uh purchasing one of these oh. you've actually helped me um through the entire process on verifying things so yeah um yeah, That's why Derek's following this. Me. You influenced me to get this because you're an influencer. Well, I guess you could say that at this point, <laughs> but I don't feel very influential. Um, I just feel like a guy that struggled through a bunch of sh shit and uh, finally got it right. Yeah. 
But uh, having Derek around with his own platform definitely assisted me in increasing my sample size and also being able to replicate it in a separate platform. Let's get that. Now, um, don't, don't don't put that thing away yet. Um, oh, I did kind of want to show it off. So the the guess, SD model with the actual platform. This is mine. Um, this is technically speaking the original barrel, but everything else has been changed. This is now our Leviton upper. Yeah, mine's filthy. So. Yep. So Leviton. This is the upper that now we sell on our website, and it we sell it because we figured it out. So Derek also has a, a Leviton upper. Is the kind of. <laughs> A little bit yeah, well it is it is a leave it then uh, it just has a different handguard yeah uh aside from that they're basically identical there's there's mm -hmm. no difference if you're curious about what the build is or what the parts list that goes into it are i'm not going to go through them on the video they're actually you can find them on our uh, website just google leave it then upper and it'll have a description of every single part that's used but every single part that was used on these uh is there for a reason it's not just because of looks, even though I think it does look cool, but it's not all entirely. I think the only thing that we have in cosmetics on this thing is actually the laser engraving. I don't think anything else is like not. Yeah. But anyway, um, so without getting too carried away, I wanted to discuss what the Faxon barrel really entails. And one of the things to watch out for if you do plan on using this for a build. So, uh, Derek, would you consider this barrel a builder's barrel? It is, but would you consider it, like, for it, the... I would say it's for the tinkerer, like you and me, someone who likes to mess with stuff, because it was, it, was it was a process, for sure. But, but would, you, would you suggest this barrel for somebody that's, like, their first build? first build I don't know, it first getting it a 300 blackout so let's say you have like a 105 or something like that yeah i would say so because it is it was fairly hard now like yeah we exist now and we can support and uh help people through it but the reason i ask it is because it's one of those barrels that i don't want to say it's picky because once you get the part selection right it's really not it can eat basically everything mm -hmm. as we both know but it's picky in the part selection in order to be able to do this. It's very yeah. selective. So that's why uh, it's kind of concerning when people start deviating off of the parts list that we supply because it just leads to a bunch of problems. Mm -hmm. The recipe works for a reason. Exactly. <laughs> so it took us a long time to figure yeah. that recipe out, but that it exists yeah. for a reason, and that's why we sell the upper as it, as it is. Mm -hmm. It's easy now since we have the recipe pretty much dialed. That was that was the hardest thing to get it to cycle subs. Other than that struggle of getting it to cycle subs, I don't know. It's been I've had it's probably my favorite platform at this point. It's I mean, definitely one of the most fun ones for sure. Oh, 100 percent. The long range one's super fun too, but just something something about it is just a blast. But what's funny about the little guy too is that it's also fun at distance. Yeah. As we've proven, because like, yeah, we we did the we did the test on uh, uh, reaching out to 300 yards, both with uh, subs and supers, and uh, it's just wouldn't you say that that thing was like retarded easy? Yeah, it was silly. It was it was way too much fun. Yeah, it was like you you shoot subs and then you kind of wait and wait and then and the, you get the the sound bing. back. Um, <laughs> and you could actually hear it because the supersonic crack wasn't actually masking the whole thing. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was great. But yeah, obviously you need a um, optic to be able to achieve this, like this uh, one to eight, which I know looks a little ridiculous I on this like gun. It. I love it. I love it too. But most people will be like, "You, you need that much scope for that little gun?" Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter because, well, you see a bunch of people running the Q mini fix with like a scope on yeah. it, and then nobody bats an eye. Everyone loves the and... voodoo, the voodoo one to ten. That's yeah. always, that goes on every mini fix. Yeah, and anybody's argument over um, the scope is like, did you do realize that any barrel length that shoots subs is supposed to leave under a thousand feet per second? So it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long the gun is because 
your goal is for the bullet to leap under or around a thousand feet per second it could be 16 inches it could be two inch barrel like mm -hmm. as long as it leaves at a thousand yeah no difference and that's kind of where this where, where this guy really shines with the with the subs it's like it really doesn't matter mm -hmm. and then as far as uh supers uh the shorter barrel actually limits obviously velocity we're getting What's 1800 that? with my with the 124s 1800 yep. feet per second that's it's <laughs> fantastic and and if you do the math on uh, the amount of energy it's basically right up there with a 105 with um, m193 and the best part is that's why i had this out here it's essentially the same size same old, same overall overall length except with a know. can yeah so ultra quiet excellent for uh cqb use i guess you could say or home defense I, this or... is my house gun like <laughs> yep when th when this is yep. down i grab this but I mostly yep. prefer my 300 blackout. What was the other thing that I wanted to touch up on? Oh yeah, it has to do with the whole building aspect. There are mm. do's and don'ts yeah. in this barrel. And uh, the do's is basically what we tell you that's on our website. But the current don'ts that I would say for this particular barrel is uh, definitely check headspace. Yeah. Headspace is important with this barrel. If you get too tight of a headspace, you will cause nothing but problems with getting rounds stuck in the chamber and then, you know, the gas system being too weak at certain subs, which is not weak if the system is set correctly, but it can definitely do a false undergassing scenario just because mm -hmm. the amount of energy required to unlock it, which is why we sell the Fax and Six Inch Barrels with a headspace BCM bolt. That's our solution to it. And uh, we refuse to sell any barrel without a headspace bolt. Uh, do not use it on a left-hand eject receiver. Oh. It is a bad idea. Why? Uh, well, I've already had to help a customer with the left-hand eject setup. Hmm. And uh, one of the main issues is, number one, the fact that the barrel extension itself internally is chamfered for the re direction of the bolt rotation so that it eases the locking and the unlocking. Well, that chamfer does not exist in the direction that the left-handed turns because the bolt actually turns in the opposite direction mm. as a standard one. So that means that the chamfer that exists on the barrel extension is literally doing nothing because now you're going straight into like a hard edge. Uh, introducing that kind of hard edge really hurts your function capabilities. Even with all the upgrades that we currently have, I still haven't been able to get full function on a left-hand eject as I have with a right hand eject model. I've even gone as far as lapping the transition of that uh that hard edge. That was gonna be so my I question. Could, yeah, yeah, so I, I did the lapping so I could do a pre break in. And uh nope. I mean it helped, but it's not quite there. It definitely needs chamfers, like a full chamfer. It, it's it's definitely something that's hurting the system with something that works with such a low low pressure as this does. As far as comparisons from this barrel once you have it dialed in. Do you have any thoughts on this versus like a uh, honey badger or a rattler? Cause I know you've shot both. Sure. I have, I've shot all three. So, I mean, I feel like I'm a little biased since I own it, but yeah, the rattler is heavy and it tried to kill me. Put your finger back there. So, so why are you bleeding? I think a little bit of this in here. Oh, yeah. I just got blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, and definitely some, somewhere up here got me. Right. I'm not sure. Probably that. Now it's got AIDS. Yeah, dude. Now your gun's gay. I'm sorry. But how, how do you how do you get it on the charging handle? How? You want to show yeah, them? Demo with the charging handle. Probably. Now put your, show where your thumb is and your fingers are. So what is so, it that you're hitting? Okay, so your I have that. no idea. Somewhere in here. You're, you're getting this guy. Yeah, somewhere in there. Oh, yeah, right there. That little dowel. <laughs> right there got me. So it's expensive, heavy, and it makes you bleed. Yeah, just be, you gotta yeah, be a man. Awesome. You gotta be, be a, a bitch. You gotta be a man to run this don't guy. Don't be a fucking bitch. Don't be poor, don't be a bitch, go to the gym is, I guess, yeah. what you have to do. Which are all good things. Yeah, and you can hip fire that beast like a mom. You're yeah. wearing a trench coat, next thing you know, rattler. Rattler, you just get rattled, dude. Yep. I'm bleeding a lot. <laughs> Lizzo will get you, dude. The Honey Badger, as I'm wearing a Q shirt, is, I mean, it's great, but it's long. It's longer than the platform. I mean, it just, it seems to work. I would compare our upper to Q's. 
to be honest, but having it shorter, a little bit more compact, easy to throw in a backpack. I take that thing everywhere. The only issue that I have with honey badger is the cost. Yeah, no. yeah, that too. I didn't even. I mean, if I do want to say by the by the time with the amount of money we have spent on these platforms, just going back and forth between parts, we're probably past honey badger territory. Yeah, I don't like to think about it. Yeah, we, it's not something <laughs> we talk about often. We try to keep it away from our minds, but we did it realistically. So you guys that, don't have to. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it is, so you guys don't have to. So now, now you could just potentially buy our upper and then call it. Good. Yeah, fair. Um, or build it yourself, and we'll help you through it. It doesn't matter to us. Yeah, I hate the just as good people, but I mean, we run it like I outrun Rich with the, with ours, with our upper, that with the, then with him with the honey badger. Yeah, exactly. So, and he then, admits uh, it, so it's it's true. What I do know is that the honey badger and sugar weasel barrel is four sixteen R stainless barrel, which with with one and five twists. And uh, what is our barrel? You're asking the wrong person. I just shoot it. Four sixteen R stainless barrel with a one and five twist fair so aside from this guy being an inch shorter it's basically the same thing except this guy's nitrided and their barrel does come with a form of a gas adjustment we don't have any found that it's not really necessary uh just because of the extra add-ons that we have mm -hmm. that's kind of hard to even get an adjustable gas block on that anyway yeah if you could do yeah, it the ones that i have found to fit don't have a gas port size on the gas block itself that is larger. Mm -hmm. So you basically have to drill out the gas block in order to accommodate. And then now that you drilled it out, you have to essentially use bore scope to make sure that you're perfectly lined up mm -hmm. if you drilled it to proper size or the exact size. Otherwise, you have to go bigger. And it's just, it's just a mess. Not even worth it. Um, which brings us to the other don't. Don't venture too far with gas blocks on this thing. There's no room on this thing for no, uh, not at all for any kind of adjustable gas block. Like people keep trying to buy. I keep seeing on Reddit people buying superlative arms gas blocks without actually verifying anything. And like superlative arms actually has a set through that sticks forward. Like yeah, that's the gas block, and then right in front of it is the muzzle device. Like there's there's no room for any kind of adjustment. It's it's just not it's not viable. So. Realistically, I would just say go with either a set screw gas block. The majority of them should be fine, but I'm not a huge fan of it because it causes leaks in the system. Mm -hmm. And uh, you need as much gas as possible. Or you just use the Voltor gas block that we sell on the site, or basically you can find it pretty much anywhere else. Yeah. And uh, that that one's basically like almost perfect to the point where you can actually use the muzzle device as the shoulder um, mm -hmm. to get the proper alignment, at least front to back. You still have to make sure you get the alignment side to side. The bubble level works great for that. Yeah. That is a big thing. That gas block will absolutely make or break this platform. If you don't get the proper alignment, I'd recommend board scope. Also, Easier stop hating on clamp bonds. That I have 1,000 rounds. You have probably about two now. Yeah. 2,000 on that. It hasn't moved. Yeah. And this thing's been uh, on and off countless times. Yeah, mine's and, only been off once when you took it off. Yeah, and it was still tight as hell. Um, yeah. Best thing about it is you can take it on and off, and it doesn't actually mar the barrel. Also, anybody that says the clamp-on systems don't work, then I um, consider you should check what drum brakes are and how they stop semis. <laughs> or um, transmissions with planetary gears. Yeah. How they can example. accelerate drag cars up to God knows how many miles an hour. Car nerds Pretty will big. know what we're talking about. Yes. Everybody else. Yeah, everybody Sorry. else is even going to talk shit about the whole system. And go, yeah. Oh, so they're better. Like, no, that's because they're better for people that don't really make sure they're installing things proper. That's about it. Because uh, last time I checked, isn't a gas key held in nothing by nothing but friction? Yeah. I'm like, well, that one's staked. Well, we stake our gas blocks on our up. So, anywho. Yeah, deviation. Um, yeah, a little bit of a deviation, but... I don't know, is there anything else you want to say about this particular barrel? Other than the teething, trying to figure out the recipe, man, it's been it's been a blast. So Anything you think they should know about it? Hmm. Like any potential negatives? Getting it on a thermal fit upper was a challenge, as you can attest Ready? to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, these barrels with the 
nickel or the NP3 plating that's on the barrel extension. Mm -hmm. They are essentially thermal fit on basically the majority of the uppers. So when you take an undersized upper, like a BCM, and then you try to just fit this barrel into it, it's... Um, <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's bad day. Yeah. It's a really bad day. And then if you make a mistake and you have to take it out, that's that's another bad day. Or yeah. if you have to read yeah. something, anything, and take that barrel out, it's I worse getting it out than it is putting it in. It's it's just I recommend a deep I, freezer um, and a blowtorch. Yeah, I had to use a concentrated torch to get the upper mm -hmm. to let go of that barrel. Freeze the barrel, even though it's on a <laughs> even though it's on a low friction surface. Yeah, an arrow upper is probably all you need. Yeah, unless you get the BCM upper for really good price which i think last i checked were like 60 bucks mm -hmm. and then there's another thing that i was going to touch up on this barrel that was important oh yeah if you're looking to use a handguard for this barrel you need to look for one that's a 5.25 inch handguard there's currently two companies that make a 5.25 inch handguard one would be slr rifle works and the other would be bg defense bg defense is the one that we use for multiple reasons i don't know i went with the midway to make it an SD look. Or, or that. If you have a suppressor that can support that, obviously my rugged can't do that because I've got the locking collar. But, yep, yeah, that's that's a, that's about it. Yeah. If you would like to support us, definitely check us out on the website. We have some Patreon. Definitely subscribe. Buying from us is a great way to do so. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook. So, but otherwise, for the platform itself, it's basically good to go until we find another problem, really. <laughs> Hopefully not. But yeah, I hope not. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys later. See ya. Say bye, Darren. I was gonna. I was waiting for you to finish. Okay, I finished. Say bye. Bye.